I'm joined by Cedric Masondo. He's the MD of Sastria. We'll be exploring trends within the short-term industry as well as recent regulations that have come into place. Cedric, thanks so much for your time. Very much appreciated. Uh, let's maybe start with the latter, and that is with regards to the regulations. So uh, TCF, for treating customers fairly, uh, the Poppy Act, and also the RDR. Maybe let's start with treating customers fairly. Where are we in terms of that rollout and, and maybe uh, the impact that we have seen this have on industry thank you very much uh, I think TCF were in the full steam of implementing TCF and TCF is not just creating policies but it's to make sure that we embed the culture I think most companies are in that process of embedding the culture from the top to the to the bottom so and the impact pro hopefully the impact will be positive to the clients and obviously from a customer standpoint, uh, this is an enhanced, the more client-centric focus mm. for, uh, for the consumer. But looking at the, the insurance industry as a whole, the implementation of TCF, uh, it's been said that it would cost insurance insurers uh, a lot more. Um, can you bear testament to that? Yes, there's no doubt. That, I mean, it, there was, it, it, it cost us money, but I think it's the right thing to do. And, and, it, and all these regulations are designed to protect the client. Uh, but I think the, the main thing is just to make sure that TCF is understood. And it's not just a policy, but it's understood at all level. And that's going to take time. It's not something that you can just implement in, in one year. So, so it's going to take time. And also every year you need to reinforce TCF to your, to your staff. Cedric, what would you say has been the main hurdle with uh, implementation of uh, this TCF regulation? I think from our side, the main hurdle is just the culture. It's just changing the culture of employees and to understand that client is more important. It's also the main hurdle that you're not just looking at the profit. You also need to in, uh, look at the interest of the clients and, and from designing the product and you need to take the client's uh, interest into account. Moving a little bit from TCF now to another regulation, RDR or the Retail Distribution uh, Review. That mm. is still under review, if yes, I'm yes, not yes, mistaken. Yes, yes. Uh, where are we with that process and what exactly does it mean? Uh, I mean, we're still in consultation phase. I mean, there's been a discussion between the industry players uh, from the SAIA insurance companies and the intermediaries. So at this stage, I mean, it's just discussion stage, but it will change the way the product is distributed and how the players in the channel are compensated. So the key thing would it not be the intermediaries. Uh, what are the concerns that we're hearing from maybe the smaller brokers in terms of what would happen uh, to their fees or maybe they may need to give up uh, their, their books, the ones they currently have. Is this a fair concern that they've been raising? It depends on, I mean, the end, the end results, how much fee can be reduced. But currently the intermediary fee or the commission, it's kept at 20% for non-moto and 12.5% for moto. So if you have to cut that, uh, of course, there will be a concern from the smaller brokers. Mm -hmm. But brokers also do more than just uh, selling product. They also do administration. So there's still a question on how are they going to be compensated on other administration duties that, that they perform either on behalf of, of the insurance companies or on behalf of their clients. Mm. This is a, a huge balancing act. Yes. In your view, how is the FSB doing in terms of putting these regulations in place and making sure that it's obviously for, uh, for the benefits of the industry as a whole, as they may say, and also looking at the, the intermediaries that are in this boat? Uh, are they getting the balance right? I think from the FSB point of view, uh, I mean, I think I, might, I, might, I want to congratulate them. The, the process has been very consultative. There's a lot of forums where the brokers through FIA or also insurance company through SAIA can engage uh, the FSB. So it's not been just FSB coming in and saying this is, you must implement like this. I mean, RTR will take a couple of years before it becomes uh, a final regulation. So they've been very co uh, consultative to the industry. And this has been in line with uh, best practice. I mean, where else have we seen it being implemented in the world uh, that we can say, you know, this is being done, this is what we're working towards, and it's, you know, in the end has resulted in a, in a better insurance sector or financial sector? Yeah. I mean, FSB's main, I mean, focus is just to make sure it's to protect the clients. I mean, I think it's been, it's clear that the chain has become longer and there have been so many mouths to feed in this process. I think that's what they are trying to do is just to make sure that they protect the client. And we've seen a number of cases where additional fees are just added in and the clients end up paying those things. So, so I think it's a right thing and also to, to, 
to streamline this whole process and make sure that the right premium is paid and the right fees are paid by the client. Mm. Poppy, that's Poppy. another yeah. one that's come in yes, that yes. I'm uh, particularly happy about because I'm, yes. I'm hoping it means that I won't be getting any SMSs from uh, you know unsolicited numbers. Is that what it means? Is it essentially the, the protection of client information? Yes, yes. Of course, it's a, it's a good thing for the client, but it also poses a lot of risk for the insurance companies because insurance companies, in, intermediaries, they sit with client's information and, and Pope is trying to make sure that that information is protected. So we've looked in our organization, for example, we sit with client's information, whether during the claims process, and we need to make sure that that, uh, that information is protected. It, it doesn't end up in wrong hands. So. It's quite. It's going to be expensive mm -hmm. because it's not just developing policies and practices, but it's also in making sure that the systems mm -hmm. are, are developed to protect, to make sure that no one, and I mean, get that information. Mm. Uh, talking about concerns, there though is the the the, the appointment of a information regulator. Mm. Uh, the progress on that has one been appointed yet? And you know, we talk about expenses. Uh, is it dis uh, discarding the information that is going to be expensive here? Yeah. So of course, I mean, all regulations you need to you need to to beef up with the appointment of, of personnel. But in in Poppy's case, I mean, the, I mean, in our case, we've we've realised that the more cost will come from making sure that the system, I mean, is fireproof, that no one just can just get into the system, and 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 also to making sure that in in the office environment. Uh, we don't have papers lying around with clients' information. I think we take it for granted, especially when you deal with claims, and we take it for granted that this is just a paper, but it contains clients' ID, clients' banking details, and their addresses. So I think it's a good act. I mean, of course, the first three, three years, it will cost us money, but eventually it will be part of business for us. In, uh, in the long term, we definitely will see the benefits, as yes, you're saying. Yes, so, yes. Uh, treating customers fairly, yes. uh, RDR and Poppy, all there in order to make sure that we have a better, more solid uh, footing in terms of the insurance sector or financial industry as a whole. Yes. Thank you so much. That yes. was Cedric Masondo. He's the MD of Sastria.